Welcome to the Harshie Podcast. I'm Brandon. And January. What do we have today? Do you mean as far as sharing the t-shirt or what we're going to talk about? I don't know. I was just trying to throw you off a little. Well, how did I do? Pretty good. Yeah, I thought that was Much better smooth. than I expected. <laughs> I was wondering what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been really excited for this week's t-shirt, so you share. I have. We are doing a new unicorn design. Everyone love the You Do You Boo unicorn shirt we had before, and it's a little bit different this time, and it's a mothering my way unicorn, and mm-hmm. I like it. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. It's pretty colorful. I think people are going to really like it. I think it might become the new unicorn shirt. You think? I think. I think that the mama unicorn holding a baby unicorn is very cute. But I also think our coffee-loving rainbow unicorn who has a you-do-you-boo philosophy should make an appearance at some point. She might. She (laughs) might. That'd be awesome. So that shirt is available from... Now through Monday. Next Monday. That's right. So for one week. Christmas Eve Eve. That's that's true. Yes. That's true. So that one, yeah, it's available this week. And I hope you love it. I which one did you want me to get? Um well definitely the slim fit. And the ice blue is pretty awesome. The ice blue slim fit with this design is really rad. And then the girls want me to get the pink crew neck sweatshirt. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because it actually looks really one. neat having the purple lettering on the pink. It just kind of works in a really funky way. And the mint green racer back tank top looks pretty good, I think. Well, I'll just have to get a couple. I think that might look good on you. Yeah, my wardrobe is going to be just rainbow, which is how it should have always been, as you said. Yes. We, we were actually just cleaning out our closet, and you said, you're starting to have more rainbow variety in your clothes. Why has it always been that way? <laughs> yeah, I, I try to get you to dress like that more in the early years of our, our relationship. Yeah. And you gravitated more towards black and gray that's, and that's brown, a body, navy blue. That's a body image thing, too. Right. You know, if I'm not comfortable in my skin, I'm going to try to cover it up with like darker colors. Now I just don't give a shit. And yeah, yeah. I'm well, like, darker oh. colors are slimming. So it makes I mean, sense. but are they? I mean, I mean, th- I mean well, yeah, so they say. Eh. Yeah, I don't so know. So they. You know how I feel about they. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So today's podcast, share what we're going to be talking about today. We have some healthy hacks. Healthy hacks. Okay. Healthy hacks. And these are things that we do around our house that I stopped to think about the other day and just realized we have some cool little things that we do here and there that... Maybe it would be fun to share a few of them on the podcast. Not all of them because I don't want to divulge all of our trade secrets, <laughs> but, you know, maybe a few. You that... make us sound more interesting than we are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, and you know what? It'll be really fun when we share this one on Instagram. I want to know some other people's hacks yes. for, their, for their daily life as well. So, all right. So what's the first one? The first one is frankincense. Oh, yeah. On the skin as an anti aging sort of a thing. Yeah. People ask me all the time what I put on my skin. And you guys, this is it. It's frankincense. I have it in a roller bottle. And I especially put it around my eyes a couple times a day, but I put it all over my skin. And whether or not I'm using any other products, because I go back and forth on products, frankincense is always the one constant the last two years for my skin. Yeah, it's actually a pretty awesome little trick. And I started using it the last few months. And Mm -hmm. the kids actually out of the blue a couple weeks after I started doing it made some kind of comment about how I looked younger to them Mm -hmm. supposedly one day. I don't care if it's true or not. They thought so. It felt good to my ego. Case so. study of one says. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that after using frankincense for a few months, <laughs> you too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> for me. And you guys I don't have... worry. We're not selling you any oils or anything right now. We, we're not doing that. This is just something we use in our daily life. That really is great. We are no longer officially involved in any kind of essential oil business whatsoever. That is true, actually. So no, For this the is just completely something that we use. We're not, I promise we're not selling anything. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, for me, I used frankincense on a skin tag once mm-hmm. that I had on the side of 
my chest really and it was driving me nuts and i put frankincense on it morning and night and after two weeks it just fell off yeah and i was like okay this is pretty (laughs) cool so yeah frankincense is pretty awesome for the skin real real quick before we move on to number two is i use it on any cuts and scrapes as well um lavender is great to use on those but frankincense is lavender and frankincense are actually a, a dynamic duo when it comes to skincare so we always have those two around and then if i have blemishes i will also put melaleuca on the blemishes so those are the things that i do for for my skin it seems to work it seems to because you have very nice skin there's a few things that work. That's one of them. That's the others them. are sleep and orgasms, but that's not what today's podcast is about. I see. All right. <laughs> All right, I number two. Notes. What's what's our what's number our two is veggie broth for a low fat cooking option. Yes. This is something that you like I just hadn't thought of. And maybe some of you are like, oh yeah, I do that too. And others of you are like, oh, I never thought of that. But when I was healing my gallbladder, we could do no oil, no oil in anything, no oil spray, no butter, vegan butter, nothing. No fat really at all. No, for I you. couldn't. And I was like, how the heck do I cook? And then I saw on like a recipe on a blog somewhere, I wish I could tell you where, that that's what she did is she cooked with veggie broth. And so we always have a, ve- a veggie broth in the fridge or pantry to cook. I mean, we've cooked anything from eggs when we were eating eggs to stir fry to tofu to, I mean, just about anything, you know. And now we do, by the way, we do cook with oil a little bit again, but we still use the veggie broth. Or when I am cooking like beans in the crock pot, if I have extra veggie broth, I'll cook it in veggie broth instead of water and then add any extra spices that I want. Yeah, I would say for the most part, though, we use that more than we do oil. We do, yes. yes. Our teenage son, on the other hand. He is always, 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 <laughs> at all times of the day, morning, noon, and night, cooking potatoes. He, that is, He yes. is a potato maniac. And he's gotten quite good at cooking potatoes, I will say. He makes a couple different varieties that are phenomenal. Yes. But yes, if you looked at our pantry, you'd see we have like four 10-pound bags (laughs) of russet potatoes in there because he is always cooking potatoes. Mm -hmm. Like basically when when family comes over, they just bring like, instead of bringing like a bottle of wine or coffee or something, they or flowers, they show up with bags of potatoes for him. And he he cooks them potatoes and everyone loves it. So, but yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. For the most part, when I cook, I bake at this point or use like we had those awesome low fat falafels. We bake them. Then we don't have to worry about oil. Yes. Um, yes. But we use veggie broth. Yeah. If I if I need a little sauteing down the span in the <laughs> in the pan, it's going to be veggie broth. Yes. So that's hack number two is veggie broth for sauteing instead of oil and butter. Very good. That's All right. Number three. Number three is one of mine okay and it's a little constipation cure and this may (laughs) sound funny this is all you but it's actually a pretty common thing and being a chiropractor i have come across this fairly often because something that happens after the first adjustment when someone hasn't either been adjusted ever before or it's been a long time the adjustment gets the pressure off the nerves, the brain and the body start communicating properly, and then everything starts working better, including the digestive system. Mm. And so it's very common for people within anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour after that first adjustment for them to have to suddenly run to the bathroom. Mm. Well, (laughs) for those of you who can't quite get to a chiropractor right this moment or for whatever reason, I have a little constipation cure that Definitely, definitely works. I have tried this myself. <laughs> and Case study of one says. <laughs> case study of one. This is something I do actually kind of on a regular basis. So please consult with your physician before trying anything that we say on this yes. podcast at home. <laughs> yes. This is something I do. It's a suggestion. This is not a prescription or anything <laughs> of that kind. It's not medical advice, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So juice six stalks of celery. I say just six because some people's digestive system is more sensitive than others. Mm -hmm. So start with six. One to two cups of uh, high water content fruit, like berries, pineapple, 
uh, mangoes, watermelon, melons. watermelon mm-hmm. yeah, melons of any kind, really. Mm-hmm. And then you can, this is optional, I like to just to really pack the punch in there, six to eight ounces of cold brew coffee. <laughs> That'll do it. Just start with that. <laughs> If you have not gone to the bathroom within, let's say, four hours, I would suggest maybe going to a doctor because that should loosen things up within the hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty effective. But you bring up a good point. I mean, we need water mm-hmm. and fruits and veggies. And so by juicing celery and having high water content fruit and then the coffee, obviously it's coffee. It's, you know... Well, with, with celery, celery is one of the top things you can do to heal your digestive system and make you regular again. It's phenomenal for that. And when you have uh, a, a fruit that is a high water content first thing in the morning, because you've been fasting all night, that, that fruit and all the nutrients, they're getting digested throughout the digestive system, not just in your stomach. Mm-hmm. And so it's a lot of nutrients really quick to everything mm-hmm. in your body. So exactly. it's very, very healing. That's awesome. So yeah, try it All out. Right. See if it works. All right. So what is number four? Number four is one of your favorites. What's that? Epsom salt baths. Yes. Yes. You know, for a while, I or when I first started using Epsom salt, I was like, well, you know, maybe it's placebo or whatnot. But in the last year or two, um, I can I can definitely test case study one that <laughs> it's not placebo. I deal with a lot of uh, fatigue and pain and muscle pain and foot pain, especially. And so um, taking one to two baths a day with Epsom salt helps with my muscle spasms, with my foot pain, and allows my body to relax to have a better chiropractic adjustment. Um, And of course, also, it's downtime where I don't bring my phone to the bath anymore. So it's downtime where I'm either talking or hanging out with you, or I'm reading on my Kindle. And I recently bought myself a Kindle, and I got like the cheapest one. And it seems like an old school one, but I love it because there's no backlight like on cell phones. So you don't have the light coming up from the back of the device into your eyeballs and your brain. Blue light specifically. Yeah, it's a blue light backlight. And so at night when I'm reading, it's like wiring my brain with that blue backlight. So with this Kindle, it's a front light. So the light is in the front and goes down as if it's going down on a piece of paper page of a book. Yes. And so it doesn't cause me any issues with my auras or my ocular migraines that I get. And it has really helped my ocular migraines have gone down because I'm looking at my phone and that blue light and that backlight. I'm, I'm just less. Yes. Way less. And so, yeah, the Kindle, we can even call this a little bonus hack. Yeah. Getting yourself a a Kindle with a front light if you're not, you know, I, I love paperback book, like paper books, but when you're a mom and you're like nursing a baby to sleep or you're like having to sit in the room with your toddler or when your kid's not feeling well or, or your partner falls asleep before you, like you can't always have a light on. So to have a Kindle where it has a front light that goes down, it's not wiring me, but I can also turn it down really, really low. And then it just looks like I'm reading in a dim light on a regular piece of paper. Absolutely. And also, too, it's not a blue light on the Kindle. Right. And that's that's important because the sun, the ultraviolet light, is blue light. Mm-hmm. And that is, it, it wires you and, and has you alert and prepare for the day. Right. And so when the sun goes down, biologically, we start having more melatonin production mm-hmm. and then we get sleepy. Mm-hmm. Well, when you're staring at your phone all the time, even though the sun's gone down, your brain is not feeling that way. It's mm-hmm. still feeling like you're wired. And so the soonest you're going to get to bed after you put your phone down or look at a screen is two hours usually. Yeah. It's, or, or you fall asleep looking at it many, many hours past when you probably needed to go to sleep. And in an already sleep deprived society and cultural and world, I mean, it's just, it's a recipe for disaster. So yeah, I don't have my phone on at night anymore. I have my phone on me way, way less. I reluctantly even still have a phone right now. I really want to go on a sabbatical, but that's a whole other thing. But the Kindle (laughs) is great because it's a front light. That's not a blue light. And um, when I first got it, I was like, 
this seems like old school technology because it's a little slower. I enter my passcode. It's a little slower. But then I realized I'm like, no, this is the way it's supposed to be because it's not that dopamine release. It's like I'm picking up a book and reading. So it's fantastic. Yes. So there's a little bonus hack on top of what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, Epsom salt baths. Yes. And you take your Kindle in there. Right. And so it's also not only helps with the Epsom salt baths physically for my body, but I'm also getting downtime self-care time with you time with my book without any devices and blue light and kids or whatever so yeah epsom salt bass and bonus an old uh, kindle with a front light that's not blue light quick bonus number two if you do look at your phone at night and you can find glasses with orange lenses Mm. that block the blue light radiation you can find them on Amazon. Yeah, there's blue light glasses now. Yeah, get those and then you can look at the screen or phone or whatever That's it is you want to do. It, that could be a, a that helpful be tool. That could be really helpful. You, exactly. Especially so. if you work in a career or a job or you're self-employed and you're always having to look at some kind of laptop, computer, phone, all of it to wear those blue light blocking glasses. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, that's, I that'd be great. I am doing a lot of that currently right now. So yeah, I, I get it. It's I'm, I have a lot of screen time right yeah. now. <laughs> All right. So what's what number are we officially on? We are on number five. Okay. <laughs> five and number two bonuses. five is another cool little hack. This is for if you have a family and you want to go out to eat, you don't feel like cooking dinner. Chipotle. Yeah, so this is my little trick. May I? You may. Okay. So Chipotle is it's just great because it accommodates all different dietary needs. So, um, but obviously we're vegan. And when I go in, they will wipe down the bar and make sure there's no cheese or sour cream cross contamination. It's fantastic. But when you have a family of eight, it actually is quite expensive, especially if you add guac, right? (laughs) So absolutely. So, um, what I do is I get sides of rice and beans, and both of the rices and beans are now vegan and their tortillas are vegan. So I get rice and beans. However, you, they will combine a big side of rice and a big side of beans in a bowl and only charge you for the two sides. And what's even better is they'll put those beans and rice in a tortilla and make you a bean and rice burrito and still only charge you for two sides. So I can go in and I can get eight bean and rice burritos and it's like 90 cents a a side. So you have 16 sides. So uh, we can feed the entire family for 15 bucks at Chipotle. Yeah. So yeah. The entire family, all eight of us. Yeah. And everyone likes their own hot sauces. So we have the Tabasco at home. We have the Franks at home. And if we want to get any extras or chips or guacamole, we can. But Chipotle is great about their sides and they'll make you a bowl. And then they don't charge you for their tortilla. If you have a tortilla, they still just charge you for two sides. And then if you do want to add something else like guacamole or maybe, I don't know, pico, then they charge it as a three pointer. So it's a little bit less than the regular. But yeah, sides of Chipotle can, if you're okay with doing your own add on stuff at home or whatnot, can be very very like cheap option well and when you're a young family like we were we were a young family for a while and you know you're in the beginning of starting your career or working on the beginning of your career if you're in school and there's not a whole lot of money to be had when you're in that position Mm -mm. or maybe you're transitioning in your life and starting a new business or finances are tight but you're just so tired and you don't feel like cooking this is actually a pretty cheap cool little option Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it is. And or you can go and get like two burritos for four dollars, you know? Yeah. Um also, side note, Taco Bell is the most vegan friendly fast food restaurant, in my opinion. And so off the dollar menu, we get the bean and rice cheesy burritos without the cheese sauce, without any sauces. It's just beans and rice, and that's a dollar a burrito. So yes. we do that as well. And uh, also to add on to this one, you know, cause you brought up being a student or, you know, going through whatever is if you have any kind of dollar store or 99 cent store by you, of course, most of us that are go students or on a really tight budget, we already know this, but I didn't realize that the 99 cent store, if you have that particular one by you has an incredible produce section. So their, their produce, their fruits, vegetables, potatoes, it's really, really great. Um, and seaweed as well, actually. And so we'll get like seaweed and rice at the dollar store, 99 cent store, produce at the 99 cent store. So so all just like little budgetary hacks when it comes to food. I mean, there's so many more, of course. But I think 99 cent store is worthy of its own 
uh, number. We'll just say that's number six. Because that's an <laughs> awesome one. Because we get those coconuts and yeah, they are fantastic. So I, yeah, we go to the 99 cent store first and we get the coconuts are $1.99. Um, and some of the produce is $1.99, depending on what it, what it is. But 99 cents to $1.99. And we get like huge bags of potatoes, coconuts. Mangoes. Like, yeah, mangoes. Bags of lemons, which goes back to our son who is a potato fiend. He puts lemon juice on his potatoes a lot. Um, plums, citrus, pineapples. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. So I'll go there first and get produce there first before I go to like Fry's or Walmart or wherever I'm going um, and get stuff there because you, I really do save a lot. But If you're I, listening to this and you're skeptical, believe me, I was the most skeptical person. I'm like, you can't get good produce at the 99 cent store. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And man, I am a total believer now. So yeah. yeah so awesome. you're not, so you're not so judgy and pretentious right now. I am That's not good. so judgy and pretentious. <laughs> you're right a little now. more humbled. I'm a little more humbled. You know, when, when I'm eating higher raw or like, I'm just not feeling well or whatever it is. And you know, people are like, Oh, that's so expensive. And it's like, well, yeah, it absolutely can be. But if I'm going to the 99 cent store and getting most of my produce there and then other stuff on sale at another store, then it is doable. It's only when you start getting those like prepared raw kale chips and prepared raw wraps and, you know, you start getting that stuff, you know, raw chocolate, then yeah, it's going to be more expensive. But the produce part is very, very doable. And every town, most towns, I won't say every town, most towns, you can find like different kinds of like um, fruit shares and co-ops and things like that as well. Um, so if you don't have like a ni- an actual 99 cent store by you, then check into any co-ops or food shares or local farms that do boxes or anything like that. Yeah, we did that a lot when I was in, in chiropractic Texas. school. Yeah, yeah in, in Dallas. Yeah. We did that a lot, lots of stuff like that. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. We got yeah. some really good. It was, I swear it was like veggies. a part time job on my part. Let me tell yeah. you what. Yeah, I was we, driving to farms and I was meeting a farmer behind Whole Foods and getting all raw milk and all sorts. Of no, stuff. no, seriously, this is no joke. I I think we ate just about the, the healthiest <laughs> diet of anyone I went to school with in chiropractic yeah, school. Yeah, it like, was literally, literally you were you I spent pretty thirty hardcore. to forty hours a week on it. I was hard. Yeah, it was really hardcore, and you know. We are, we yeah. Anyways, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Let's keep going. Let's keep <laughs> another going. Episode, next, another episode. Next. All right, our final one yes. is breast milk. <laughs> Number seven. You really added that one in. Breast milk cures everything. It man, really oh it makes everyone happy. Everyone breasts make everyone happy. Well, for the most part, but in one way or another. I mean, whether you're using the breast milk to cure your pink eye or to you know feed your sick your baby and then when they do get sick your breast milk literally changes to have what it needs in it to help your baby fight off whatever it is or you know in the bedroom or you know (laughs) outside the bedroom but (laughs) whatever your kink is hey and then you know they're just it's amazing and you know I'm done with breastfeeding and I had a moment when I was drying up and I knew we were done having kids that I was like, what the hell am I going to do when we get pink eye or when this happens or that happens? So I had to like go back and remember how I used to have like colloidal silver spray and these oils and this balm and this cream and this whatever and an aloe plant in the house because honest to God, breast milk is like a one size fits all for all that shit. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It is amazing. I mean, when our oldest got into poison oak, the only thing that calmed down her itching was breast milk being rubbed into her skin. We tried everything else. Breast milk is definitely probably the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate health hack. It's pretty awesome. I can't can't disagree. (laughs) I can only agree. You know what? I'm glad I didn't get caught up in those double negatives there. (laughs) You need to always approach things with me where you always agree. <laughs> well, I guess you're mothering your way, aren't you? I'm always, I, I do. I always have mothered my way no matter yeah. what anyone says. So I guess I'll have to get a few of those unicorn shirts because I know you're trying to circle your ass all the way back here. Yep, I'm <laughs> circling back. <laughs> I hate that term, you guys. I hate it circle back when people are like okay well we'll circle back i'm like just don't just stop on the half circle and stay there <laughs> like don't, don't go back. this we, we are not boomerangs okay <laughs> i don't need you to circle back 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I hope that these hacks help you guys. I want to hear about your hacks and check out the shirts. Until next time. Adios. Love you.